There's this guy Chris on, on Mr. Beast's YouTube channel. Mr. Beast, biggest YouTube channel. And this guy Chris is married with a, a kid. And Chris has just decided that he's a woman now, which I imagine was not a pleasant thing for his wife to hear, a very cruel thing to do to his son. Puts Mr. Beast in a terrible position because Mr. Beast tries to remain apolitical, but now his sidekick is is taking on the most controversial issue in all of politics right now. And what is Mr. Beast going to do? As of now, Mr. Beast is defending his friend and employee, and he's attacking the transphobes. That is not, probably not a good winning path in the long run, because there are a lot of transphobes. If by transphobes, we mean people who just rationally understand that men and women are different and men can't become women. If you start attacking the transphobes, I don't think that's going to be great for your 100 plus million view videos. But back to Chris. I mentioned on the show, I, I don't really care uh, about this guy Chris's opinions on transgenderism or sex or the composite of body and soul or anything like that. I don't even really care that much about Mr. Beast's opinions on YouTube. But I asked the question, how does a guy wake up at the age of 26 with a wife and a child and decide that he's a woman? And I suggested that the aspect of this whole transgender phenomenon that people are not really talking about is porn, that porn is driving a lot of this. And I, I even had that thought because I was speaking to a reporter who had done a little bit of a deep dive onto all the kind of weird porn. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying this reporter was sort of prowling late at night on the secret uh, browser tab or anything like that. But uh, she had gone, gone down this rabbit hole of a specific type of porn that men who have rapid onset gender confusion attribute their confusion to this. I started watching this porn, which is kind of a hypnosis. And then what do you know? I can't get it out of my head and it's melted my brain. And now I think that I'm a woman. So Ali Stuckey, our great friend, Ali Stuckey, dug up an old tweet from this guy, Chris, on the Mr. Beast show. And she said, in a tweet that he just deleted, Chris from Mr. Beast, who recently announced he's transitioning to a woman, says he likes Loli, which is L-O-L-I, which is a form of anime porn in which the female characters are depicted as children or even babies. Man, many, many such cases among trans men. I don't know what this guy Chris meant by that comment, where he, he had made this whole comment about how much he lusted after this genre of pornography. I'm not saying it means that he's a pedo. I, I'm not saying it wasn't even just a joke on Twitter. But what is undeniable from this is that this guy, Chris, knows a lot about porn. <laughs> if you're familiar enough with porn to make a joke about this obscure sub-sub genre of pornography, then you know a lot about porn, which would seem to back up my thesis, which I, I said on the show is just a hunch. I'm not, I don't know this guy, Chris. There's, I haven't read any scientific study with a lab coat, but I strongly suspect that if you start to have really bizarre sexual ideas and desires, it might have something to do with the ubiquity of bizarre, extremely high-tech pornography that is warping people's minds and that they write, people write into this show even sometimes. They'll say, I got hooked on porn at age 10 and it's been a struggle for my whole life. Maybe that's something that politicians should do something about. Now, speaking of the justice system, Speaking of transgender identifying people, there is a dude who thinks that he's a chick who attacked a Catholic church. He was finally arrested for this. And this guy destroyed religious property. Uh, this is a crime that holds a maximum prison sentence of one year, uh, up to a $100,000 fine, up to five years probation, supervised release following prison. So this is this is pretty serious. And the Biden DOJ just recommended no jail time. Of course it did. The Biden DOJ, Biden FBI, which sends agents in to spy on Catholics who go to mass on Sunday. The Biden DOJ and FBI, which then tried to deny that they were spying on churches and, and viewed Catholics as potential domestic terrorists, we then found out this was a real program. It wasn't just a one-off memo that, that, that nobody knew about. This was a program by the FBI. There were, there were agents assigned to cultivate sources to try to flip priests, 
to violate the inviolable seal of the confessional potentially and to, to rat to the federal government on, on their flock. And then a, a member of the protected religion, the protected cult of transgenderism goes and attacks a, the persecuted religion, Christianity, and specifically Catholicism, and he gets off scot-free. This is how it works. This is how the, the I, I don't need to tell you that. You're well aware of that. But the, the liberal regime, the elites in power with the bow ties, not they don't wear bow ties, with the long neckties and the very fancy jackets, and they've got the really fancy offices in Washington, D.C., they're not going to go out and commit street crime. But street crime is important for them to maintain their political dominance. And so what they do is they just encourage all sorts of miscreants to commit, commit the street crime for them, and then they let them off the hook. And then they bail them out of jail. And then when BLM is marauding all over the country for eight months, Kamala Harris raises money to bail the, the criminal BLM activists out of prison. Joe Biden's staffers raise money to bail BLM out of prison. So what does that do? That creates an incentive for more of the street crime, which intimidates conservatives and Christians and normal people who are now going to think twice before speaking out because they don't want their church destroyed. They don't want their pro-life pregnancy center destroyed. They don't want their homes destroyed. They don't want to be attacked in public by people who will have impunity to do it. Speaking of corruption in the administration, the Pentagon inspector general has found that corruption in Ukraine funding and arming is very, very high risk. The Defense Department recognizes Ukraine's history of corruption and considers the possibility of aid being deflected before it reaches its intended target to be a high risk. Another official at the Pentagon is concerned about weapon systems that we're sending over there and the theft of those weapon systems. They say, this is according to uh, an official being reported by Defense One, DOD procedures, the most advanced systems in the world, there are many entities to include foreign nations as well as criminal groups that want to get their hands on weapons technology, etc., which raises the question that I've been asking since day one on all of this Ukraine stuff. Namely, what are we funding? What's the goal here? Because from my position, it feels like our sclerotic leaders are sleepwalking us into World War III. What's the end goal here? We could have prevented the war easily. Joe Biden, Donald Trump did prevent the war. Donald Trump is the president on whose watch, uniquely among recent presidents, Vladimir Putin did not further invade any foreign nations. But Biden comes into power. He could have prevented the invasion, probably. He could have done that by maintaining sanctions on Russia, even according to the Ukraine president, Vladimir Zelensky. Biden lifting those sanctions impelled Russia to invade. Then what happened? Then Biden said, if it's just a minor incursion, we won't do anything about it, that's fine. Further encourages Russia to invade. Then the United States funds the war, says we're going to fund the war into perpetuity. So now the war continues to escalate. You've got now explicit threats of nuclear war. Russia is saying it's not even a cold war anymore. Russia is saying we are directly in a hot conflict with the United States. And then you look over there at China and you see China beginning to aggress on Taiwan in the South China Sea. It just feels like we're slow walking into World War III. So what are we doing here? We're funding Ukraine to the tune of billions and billions of dollars, over $100 billion. What do we want? Do we want Ukraine in NATO? I don't. Is that the plan? Do we want Ukraine in the European Union? That doesn't seem like a great idea either, but okay, let's, tell, let's figure out what, what the plan is. Do we, want, do we want to invade Russia? Do we want war with Russia? Do we, what's happening here? Do we want a buffer state in Ukraine, which I think would have been smarter? What are we funding? It seems like we're just funding more and more corruption with no end in sight. Producer Colton has brought me my iPad, so I get to chat with you in the member room segmentum, which begins now. Head on over to dailywire.com slash Knowles. I will need your help to ascertain which of the headlines are fake, which of them are real. Dailywire.com slash Knowles. Use code Knowles. You'll get two months free on all annual plans.